had we had a plan for the content that but it was kind of vague and then coming out of conversations with teachers and making observations in classrooms and figuring out what resources we could pull together we um, like my original idea for westward expansion was not to do the Oregon Trail it was to crack it open and do stuff about black pioneers and the exodusters and stuff but all the teachers are doing this Oregon Trail thing so I decided to like put my like desires aside and then focus on the Oregon Trail thing to think about like how can we make this a more rich experience how can we enhance what they're already doing in the classroom so that they're not like tossing the baby out with the bathwater to start with something totally new or just going to my workshop and learning about the exodusters and then filing it away and continuing on with their Oregon Trail stuff so I mean that's what the resources in their classroom <coughs> are largely Oregon Trail which is why it's taught so we used the um, use that to re retool it, and then we brought in this idea of mapping, and that came from talking with teachers about what their kids needed, and me trying to think about what resources I knew were in the city, and how could we make this more engaging and more interesting. Figured out we're really working on mapping the curriculum to see how it spirals up, mm -hmm. so that you're introducing this idea of a grid maybe in third or fourth grade and then in fifth grade you're starting to introduce the ideas of latitude and longitude when you're looking at the Oregon Trail maps the grid becomes not ABC one two three it's degrees north and south that the kids are actually using to orient themselves on the map so it's a way of um, you know they understand the idea of grid and then they go into the more complicated thing of latitude and longitude and we're trying to think about break it apart what what's on the maps, the historic maps that they're actually using, and then how do we scaffold that so that it aligns with the history curriculum and the geography curriculum so that the kids are not doing the geography unit and then it's like done with that, knock that one off the list, let's go to history now. Because Sam's been doing this work since the early mid-90s, I think, and he says that that's the one thing that he's consistently struggling with teachers to get them to do is to make that transition between the work that you do with the terrain models and the imaginary land maps and then taking it back into social studies and having the teachers actually use it and have the kids apply the information and the ideas that they've gotten from the first part of the work. And so that's really what we're trying to, to make a little bit more obvious and to, um, and to make it more articulate. To give the teachers the, the knowledge, the actual content knowledge, uh, to reinforce that because it's, it's not just there for you. You know, you have to really study up on it and know what you're teaching and know it in depth so that you actually understand yourself what you're teaching the kids and, uh, and not be afraid to, to go a little bit further. We, we know how to do this very well in the language arts because that's what New York City has been um, really focusing on and understandably but now it's time to to put that focus into history into geography and to to integrate it.